Hi church, welcome to our online experience. We are so glad that you've taken time to come and experience God and at the same time worship and hear God's word. We believe even though we are isolated just sitting in our living rooms, not been able to meet each other for the last 6 months, we just want to like take some time to actually just thank God for protecting us. How many of you can agree that even as we just started this month of October that he's protected us all this long, you know? And I'm going to read uh two three verses from Psalm 33 to encourage us and for those who still uh, are struggling with doubt with fear remember that god is our shield uh, reading from psalm chapter 33 verse 11 it goes on to say but the plans of the lord stand firm forever the purposes of his heart through all generations so remember that he holds our future in his hands and so the plans that he has for you no one can stop it no one can change it And so commit your ways to God so that he can direct all your path. And I want to conclude with the last few verses. The psalmist concludes in this psalm. It goes on to say, We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. So today, even as we get into a time of worship, our hope is in jesus our hope is in the creator of this heaven and the earth and so even as we worship my heart and prayer is that we all will lean in we all will raise our hands we all will commit ourselves and worship god for who he is remember when we worship god and lift him up everything else looks smaller in front of him he will direct our hearts to do the right things and he will be exalted so church can i just uh, encourage you can we just step in and lean in and worship god with all that we have Baby
Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you that, Lord, we get to worship you, Lord Jesus. We pray that, Lord, even as we uh, have just sung these songs, Lord, we lift you up, Lord. Even right now, whatever situation that we are in the midst of, we just lift you up. We believe you are God and Lord over all the earth, Lord Jesus. Church, can we just open our mouth and declare, Lord, you are God and Lord over all the earth. Lord, you are God and Lord over every situation in my life. Lord, you are God and Lord over every sickness in my life. Lord, you are God and Lord over everything that's happening around me, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. The last thing is that, Lord, you are Lord and God over me, Lord Jesus. There is no one else, Lord. And even right now, we exalt you. We lift you up. We pray that, Lord, you will take your rightful place, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We pray for the needs, Lord, as a church together. We stretch our hands, Lord. Can we all just stretch our hands towards the screen and just agree in together that, Lord, we pray that for all the needs placed before us, that, Lord, you would come through, Lord Jesus, right now. We pray specifically, Lord Jesus, for this entire pandemic, Lord. Lord, even as cases are rising, even as things are opening up, Lord, even as people are uh, starting to move around, Lord, in, and the lockdown is being lifted, I pray that, Lord, your protection will be upon your people. We pray especially, Lord, for those who are still, Lord, uh, stuck in hospitals, for those who are still struggling for their lives, Lord, that your hand be upon them, Lord Jesus. I pray that, Lord, your protection will be on them, Lord Jesus, that they'll revive, that their lungs and their body will become stronger and they'll be able to come out, Lord Jesus, of this um, sickness, Lord. We pray, Lord, for all the doctors, nurses, hospital people who are, Lord, pouring their lives out, Lord Jesus, in helping others, that, Lord, you would protect them and keep them safe, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, we pray, Lord, even right now, Lord, for uh, the nation that we are as of right now. We pray that, Lord, our nation will be protected, Lord. We pray that, Lord, even as... Um, in different states are taking different protocols that you'll give our leaders wisdom, Lord, that they'll have wisdom from above. I pray that, Lord, even they'll have the heart, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you'll be able to move in and through their hearts, Lord, to do what you've called them to do, Lord Jesus. We pray even right now, Lord, for the justice system, Lord. We pray for justice to prevail, Lord, for inequality, Lord Jesus, to be completely uh, be demolished, Lord. I pray, Lord, even right now, Lord, for the various situations that have risen, Lord, in the last week, Lord Jesus. We just pray against every form of inequality, Lord Jesus, and we pray that your will and plan and purpose will come through, Lord. I pray specifically, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, we believe you are a God of justice. And I pray that, Lord, you will move the right uh, people's heart, Lord, to take action and do things that are needed, Lord Jesus. We pray for the economy of our land, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you will take control. I pray, Lord, for those who've lost jobs, Lord, even as they are in the uh, midst of applying for jobs and seeking jobs, that, Lord, you would open the right door for them, Lord, the right door which they've uh, so long desired for that you would open. I pray for those who are struggling Lord, financially, Lord, over the last few months with this entire pandemic. I pray that, Lord, your hand come through, Lord Jesus, even as we start this month, that we would see your provision, Lord Jesus. I pray that, Lord, we would direct everything, Lord, of our thanking. We'll be able to thank you only, Lord, for everything. And I pray especially right now that they'll be able to, Lord Jesus, find provision in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. I pray specifically right now for all those who are sick, for all those who are, Lord, struggling with terminal illness, Lord, right now, that your hand be upon them. We pray for healing, Lord Jesus. We believe that, Lord, the cross has the final word. The finished work of the cross says, I am healed. And we declare that, Lord Jesus, over each and every one, Lord. I pray, Lord, for those who are in the journey of their terminal illness, that they'll have a renewed strength, Lord, and a renewed faith, knowing that you are in control, Lord Jesus. We thank you. May your hand be upon them, Lord. May your hand be upon, Lord Jesus, the families of them, Lord Jesus, that they'll have renewed strength, Lord, we thank you. Pray specifically for all the others, Lord, in church who are, Lord, stepping into new areas of doing something, Lord Jesus, stepping into uh, the different seasons, Lord Jesus. I pray for those who are in the midst and who are wanting a breakthrough that you would come through, Lord. In every season, we will acknowledge you as Lord and God and we'll see your mighty hand that will lead us through, Lord Jesus. I pray for those who are um, sick within their bodies, who are sick emotionally, Lord Jesus, who are, Lord, struggling in their spirit right now, Lord, that, Lord, you would set right it. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fall afresh into each and every living room right now, Lord, that you would come through into each and everyone's life situation right now. I pray that there will be healing for those who are broken in spirit, that, Lord, your words will mend their hearts, Lord Jesus, and that you would lift their spirits up, Lord. May you be glorified. We declare you as Lord and God over everything, Lord. May you be lifted up. May you be lifted up. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. And all oh, Christ be magnified. The altar of
Father, we just lay aside every strength that we have put in ourselves, every trust that we have put in any other frame except Christ. We just set it, set it aside and we thank you this morning. We thank you for the privilege and the benefits that we have in Jesus. And we just want to exalt him, Lord. Just lift up his name on high. Just bless him. We have a Zoom call every Sunday at 11 a.m. for children. If you have children below the age of 12, they are welcome to join us. We have a Youth Connect every Saturday morning at 11.30 a.m. Teenagers are welcome to join us. If you need prayer or just someone to speak with, please contact us on this number. We would love to get in touch with you since we believe that when we pray together, there is power in agreement. We meet on Zoom this Wednesday for prayer and communion. You can DM us on the following number for more details. We hope you can join us and be blessed. Seeking God every day is necessary in order for us to thrive and to be transformed. We as the church have published a few Bible plans on the YouVersion Bible app. All you have to do is to download the app and search for We Are Zion Chennai on it. You can do the plans alone or with your friends. Our desire is that through doing these plans, you will develop a deep love for God and His Word. If you struggle to stay disciplined in your reading of the Bible regularly, we would love to do a plan with you and help you develop this life-changing discipline. Hi Church, it's my joy and privilege to share God's word with you today. Um, as you know, we've been looking at the series called Herd Immunity. We've been looking at how uh, we do better together. We're not created for being in isolation, but we've been created and redeemed for community. And of course, we looked at what the fruit of such a community would look like. We looked at a joy-filled community. We looked at humility within the community. And then today we're going to be looking at an honest community. So um, right off the bat, I need to say this. The truth always sounds so intimidating, right? Saying, you know, we expect honesty from someone or from ourselves just seems so intimidating. I, for one, I'm, I'm a parent and um, it's something that we insist upon at home. We insist that the children uh, speak the truth at all times. And just like typical little children, that, that really doesn't get followed much. And so what happens very often is they lie and then they get into trouble for it. And then when we pull them up and say, you know, you should have told us the truth, the thing that they tell us in return is, if we had told you the truth, we would have been punished. So the truth is usually pretty intimidating. And today we're going to be looking at the truth in the light of God's word and what God wants to tell us about honesty. And I hope that it will not intimidate you anymore, but it will encourage you to step into the light, to step into a place 
of complete honesty before God and before his people. Can I just say a quick word of prayer before we begin? Father, I pray that as we get into your word, that you will speak to each one of us. Father, where there are areas we need, we need to be honest with ourselves, that we will do that. Where we need to be honest with our neighbors, with our friends, with our community, that Lord, you will help us. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as we get into the word of God, I want us to just look at it like this. An honest community, when I looked at it closer and closer, is this, that honest community is made up, first of all, of honest individuals, those who walk in the light. And an honest community is made up of those who speak the truth in love to each other. Let's look at the first point, which is a community where everyone walks in the light. What does this look like? Let's look at 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 to 10. This is what it says, walking in the light. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. The Apostle John is basically likening walking in the light to walking in the truth. The reason being on its own, like I said, the truth is so intimidating. When we tell people, you know, you need to speak the truth, it intimidates them. But here he's saying walking in the truth is like walking in the light. We need the light. And most importantly, God is pure light, he says. God is pure light. So that goes to show that when we are in a close relationship with God, his light is going to shine upon us. His light is going to envelop the darkness that sometimes takes over us. His light is going to pierce areas that have thus far been in darkness. That's what it means when it says God is pure light. It also means that we need to open ourselves up to this light. A lot of times we like to be in denial. We live in a time where we have filters, we edit, um, we, you know, cut, copy, paste, where we put up social media profiles which are less than the truth. And so we are used to fake identities. We are used to covering up the truth most often. But when we are walking with God, he says we cannot hide the truth. We are sinners. We are still sinners. We, we are in need of God's grace and forgiveness constantly. Yes, we stand righteous because of Christ's finished work, but we still falter. There are still remnant sins in our life that the truth of God must shine its light on and reveal it. So are you prepared for the light of God to actually light up those parts of your life? The other thing that the Apostle John talks about is he says we need to admit our sinfulness. I like what uh, Pastor John Piper writes. He says a saint is not someone who is sinless. It is someone who is sin conscious. And here he says if we, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. So remember I was saying the truth should no longer be intimidating. And why should it not be intimidating? Because when we speak the truth to God, when we say, Lord, this is who I am. I just discovered I'm incredibly greedy. I just discovered that I'm incredibly covetous. What he does is he forgives us. When we repent, he forgives us. And that's the greatest incentive. So we are privy to the forgiveness of God every single time. And so the truth no longer has to be intimidating. The truth no longer has to get us scared and afraid. When the muck and grime of our life is exposed, we can be content to know that every sin is forgiven by Jesus, that we just have to repent and confess it. And he promises to forgive us. I want us to look at the life of the Apostle Paul from 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 12 to 17. And this is Paul being at his most honest. Let's read it. He says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience 
as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life here paul is saying this is who i am i was a blasphemer i was a persecutor i was a violent man not the greatest bio data but he's so honest and raw about who he was and it's very interesting in verse 15 he says Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. He doesn't say I was the worst. I am the worst. Currently present tense, which means that we don't become saints the minute we we accept Jesus into our life. Yes, we are being sanctified and we will get there someday. But right now, right now, when we examine ourselves in the light of God's word, in the light of who Jesus is, the muck, the grime, the darkness, the secret sins they get exposed but are we ready to confess are we ready to come before god in all humility and say lord this is me completely exposed you know every inch of me now that you've shown it to me i want to repent of it and that's what the apostle paul was doing and ultimately when we reveal our true self before god when we can admit to god this is who we are we can admit to ourselves who we really are and then when we have the ability to share it with others we do it not with the intention of getting sympathy or or pity or um even applause we do it just so that god gets all the glory just so that all of the glory is reflected onto him and not to us we can take the encouragement but we give the glory back to god that is the purpose of being honest with ourselves so the first thing is for a community to be truly honest every single person must walk in the light because when we walk in the light we know the truth about ourselves we know the truth about who we are in the eyes of god and we can come before him in all honesty i'm reminded of this story that's been told of the man in a dark room this man found himself in a dark room completely pitch dark he didn't know where he was he didn't know what lay around him and as he groped around in the dark um looking for something familiar his right hand bumped into something sharp and metallic and it felt foreboding and so he shrank away from that and as he continued to um move around he then stumbled into something large and furry and soft and so he instantly felt like he could take refuge in that and so he leaned into that when the light did come on when dawn did come back when the light filled the room he was shocked to see that the large furry um thing that he had taken refuge in was actually a huge man eating monster with huge teeth extremely scary looking and that sharp metallic thing that he had touched with his right hand had actually been the sword of Christ held in the hands of Christ himself to slay that dragon and save him to slay that beast and save him that was what he had missed because it was so dark in that room that was what he had missed because he was not walking in the light today you and i we need to walk in the light so that we don't embrace the darkness so that we don't embrace the things of darkness but so that we choose Christ and his ways time and time again are you ready to walk in the light that's my first question are we as individuals ready to walk in the light so that every deed of darkness is exposed so that evil no longer has a grip on us that's the first thing the second thing is an honest community is made up of people who can speak the truth in love to each other so the catch in that is speaking the truth in love because a lot of us are very good at speaking the truth over someone else but we we miss out the love part i've also noticed that sometimes we can speak the truth in love about someone to someone else which comes under slander but here he's saying we need to speak the truth in love to each other let's read from ephesians chapter 4 verses 15 to 16 and verse 25 it says this rather speaking the truth in love we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love verse 25 therefore having put away falsehood let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another this verse you know has been so misunderstood has been so misused and it has left many members of the church uh the global church wounded bruised offended but when we look at it in the light of the way god intended it i'm sure it will bring about unity i'm sure it will bring about healing so what the apostle paul is actually saying here he's saying this you are commanded to speak the truth to each other in love 
because that's what Christ did. When we look at the ministry of Jesus on earth, he never minced words with people. He never said what was convenient. He was never politically correct. He was just honest with people. But then when he dealt with those who were riddled with sin, when he dealt with those who were um, caught up in, in miry situations, he spoke the truth to them in love. He said, go and sin no more. He lifted the broken. He didn't judge them. He didn't condemn them. And that's where this verse stems out of. He says, when you do that, when you speak the truth to each other in love, you build up the body of Christ. He says this, he says, you and you will grow up into every way, into him who is the head, who is Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint, will be equipped and each part will be working properly and so that you can grow together. So the purpose of speaking the truth in love has to be very clear. What is our motive when we want to speak the truth to someone? So our motives matter. Why do I want to speak the truth to someone? Is it because of a motivation of hate or revenge? Or is it because I need to get some clarity and closure? Or is it because I want to enable the body of Christ to have more unity? Do I want to encourage that person in love? Do I want to build them up? That's very important. That's, that's the motivation behind speaking the truth to someone. Speaking the truth in love, the biblical way, actually means having truth and love in balance. I didn't know this early on. I'm only learning it now. I practice it on my children because the truth is important. We must speak the truth to each other, but how we deliver it is very important. Warren Wearsby, the uh, Bible teacher, this is what he said. He said that um, truth without love is brutality and love without truth is hypocrisy. We cannot choose one over the other. We cannot sacrifice the truth in the name of love and we cannot push love out of the way at the expense of telling the truth. So we need to be very careful as to how we balance it. So I was recently reading The Relevant magazine and um, I found an interesting article which better explained how to speak the truth in love. So there are two kinds of bad Uber drivers. The first kind, um, they pick you up in a beautifully maintained car. The car smells great. There are cushions inside. He gives you AirPods. He lets you play the music of your choice. Um, he provides you a cold beverage. Um, but then when you give him your destination, you give him the address, he has no clue how to get there because he really does not know how to navigate the navigation system. Neither does he know the route on his own. And so what happens is when you should have reached your destination in about half an hour, you're roaming around the city for about two hours. That is what love without truth looks like. There's no direction. You're aimless. You're just wandering around. And when we speak, just we speak without any truth. We only show love. There's a problem with that because we don't lead people to the destination that they are meant to go to. The other kind of bad Uber driver is the type who is excellent with navigation. You tell him any location in the city, he'll take you to it. But the problem is his car smells like something died in there. He's crass. Um, he doesn't care for you. He just tells you to get inside. He drives you so fast, you think that maybe your heart and your lungs were left behind in the last traffic stop. And so what happens is um, he's not even listening to you as you give instructions, as you're telling him to slow down. And so what happens, you take the first opportunity at the next traffic stop, you actually sneak out of the car. And what happens is this driver goes to the destination, stops there right in front of that door. But when he looks back, you're missing. The passenger has gone. And that's what it looks to speak the truth with no love. You lose the person along the way. Somewhere down the line, your method was wrong. Your delivery was wrong. You lost the person. That's what it looks like to just speak the truth with no love in the mix. And so I want to encourage us, how do we actually speak the truth and love to each other? Paul, the Apostle Paul, again, is a great example of how he did that. Let's look at Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. He says this, But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? Imagine this, Paul is a new apostle. He's been newly appointed. He's been just working for about three, four years now. And here was Peter, a seasoned disciple, 
first hand eyewitness to Jesus himself who's gotten lost somehow who got carried away by a bit of hypocrisy and here Paul confidently faces him and Barnabas who are literally a pillars of the early church and he says what you're doing is wrong and he says it using the gospel as the framework he doesn't say you know this is what i feel or this is what i think he uses the gospel the truth of the gospel to correct them and so that is very important when we tell the the truth to someone else in love the holy spirit has to be our guide if the holy spirit tells you this is not a required conversation you don't need to have it you can obey him and step back but if he wants you to have that conversation he will lead you and he will give you the words and we must remember this that the holy spirit works for the good of the church he works for unity he works in order to preserve peace and so the words that come out of your mouth will be edifying they will not tear down the other person they will not demean the other person instead it will actually build that person up and so we must be so spirit led when we speak the truth in love also when we speak the truth in love like paul we need to use the gospel as our base not our pet theories because we all let's face it we all have our own pet theories of what is right and what is wrong but the bible is our compass and so the gospel has to be the basis on which we speak the truth in love it's very important for us to look deeper and see what our motives are why am i correcting this person in love is it out of love or is it out of a sense of needing revenge is it to make myself uh, look wiser and smarter is it to prove a point or instead is it to preserve peace is it to grow that person the beauty of it is this if we speak the truth and love to each other the body of christ is benefited we are equipped we grow together we grow closer to christ and we grow closer to each other so when we speak the truth in love to one another we don't actually push people away we draw them closer so i want to encourage us each of us are part of a community already can we be honest members can we walk in the light as individuals and then can we speak the truth in love to each other with the purpose of only building up with the purpose of preserving peace for the purpose of preserving unity so i want to pray for us this day that each of us will experience this light in our lives there are areas in every one of our lives that are still darkened by sin none of us are there yet and only the light of jesus only the light of his word can reveal those things and can show us exactly who we are not to condemn us for the bible says that the, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free that's what the bible says the truth sets us free that is the greatest incentive in walking in the truth so i want to pray with us right now that we will experience the power of the gospel to free us from sin the power of jesus to light up every dark place and to release us from the power of sin from the effects of the darkness in our life father in heaven i just thank you for this time i thank you lord that you have been speaking to each of us about areas in our life that are still darkened by sin that are still eclipsed lord by the things that are not pleasing to you and father we can be in denial for the rest of our lives or we can come clean before you and so we ask right now that holy spirit you will reveal to us you will reveal to us you will guide us into all truth that lord you will show us exactly where we need more of you exactly where things have to change father we thank you that lord you don't leave us the way we were you love us too much for that and that father we pray that we'll be open to your light that every darkness will be dispelled that everything that is not of you will get cleared out and we'll have more of you in our lives we pray that you will help us speak the truth in love to each other with the intention to build each other up not to tear each other down lord but to build each other up and to equip us for the greater purposes you have for us in jesus name amen amen if you have a fundamental question of what is the truth who is the truth what is the gospel i want to direct you to john 14 verse 6 which says jesus said i am the way the truth and the life he embodied truth there is no other way to the father except through him that's what jesus said And so today if you're looking for the truth Jesus is your answer. The gospel is this simple that we were created in the image of God but we fell because of our sinfulness. But then Jesus was sent into the world to die for you and me for our sinfulness, to save us and to restore our relationship with God. And so if you are looking for more meaning, if you've been searching for purpose, if you've been searching for God, Jesus is your answer. When you know Jesus, you know God. for Jesus was God himself and so can i pray this simple prayer with you if you say i want jesus in my life 
I have a gaping void that I think only this Jesus will fill. Can you repeat this simple prayer after me? Dear Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I admit that so often I've gone off track. I need you. I want you in my life, Jesus. Forgive me of every sin. I pray that you will cleanse my heart. Come into my heart. Make your home with me, Lord. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe that you are the risen savior. I hand over my life to you. Come in and be the Lord and savior of my life. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. This is the single greatest decision you would ever have made in your life, and I believe that as you have stepped into this new journey, a journey of faith, a journey of knowing Jesus as your personal savior i pray that you will be blessed in every way if you have questions if you want to journey along with others get in touch with us we would love to get to know you we'd love to spend time with you we'd love to grow you in in the knowledge of the word as well um we pray that you will be blessed immensely i pray that this week for each of you will be one filled with the truth of god's word i pray that his light will shine into the darkest places god bless you church we've come to the last leg of our uh, church online experience and even as uh, we close the service i would love to encourage you that even as we start this month let's start it strong strong knowing that jesus is the way jesus is the truth and jesus is the life that even as we heard that every area where we've been struggling where we probably have been listening and given years or probably even claimed false promises over our life let us look to jesus and claim the truth that he has and he is for our lives and so i pray that you'll have a blessed week make sure to get in touch with us we uh, have so many midweek things happening that we would love for you to partake of and be part of uh, our whatsapp number is there on the screen do follow us on instagram and for those of you who want to continue on with the series or probably missed a few of the series you can log on to youtube and see the remainder of uh, uh, the earlier services that have uh, the sermons available do remember to subscribe to us and follow us and at the same time uh, get in touch with us because we love to get to know you we would love to pray with you and we would love to journey along with you so even now can i just close the service may the love of the father the grace of his only son jesus christ and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore and all god's people said amen amen go in peace and god bless you and remember whoever finds jesus finds life